right now, Pittsburgh's best sports show is about to begin. Call us or tweet us. We've got things to talk about on the Ireland Contracting Nightly Sports Call. All right, thanks a lot, and thank you for sticking around for the Ireland Contracting Nightly Sports Call. I'm Rich Walsh. I'll be joined by Andrew Filipponi in a matter of moments from the 93.7 The Fan Cam. And we're obviously going to be talking about the Steelers. And one of the biggest topics so far, like it is the last couple of weeks, is the Steelers quarterback situation. Who's going to be the starter right now? It's no doubt, I think, Justin Fields. Uh, Tomlin isn't really naming him a starter. Uh, he basically said it's likely he's going to start, but he still is saying that how Russell Wilson isn't quite healthy yet. He's going to ramp them things up. Uh, Pony, what's your opinion on this? Should they just come out and say, hey, Fields is our guy right now until Russell Wilson is healthy, which is probably a couple weeks away? Now, I thought Tomlin pretty much uh, implied that today that even though Russell Wilson is, yes, you can't hear me? You guys don't have me now. Can you hear no, me? No, I One, got two, you. Three, Go, four, five. I got you. Yeah. Can't hear me. A little bit of Richie? delay. Nothing? Okay. All right. That was very weird. Um, <laughs> no, I think Mike Tomlin sounded like a coach who uh, was asked several questions about, you're laughing, so something go is not going right here. Uh, was asked several questions about uh, Russell Wilson and Justin Fields and allowed for more hypothetical conversation today. He did not shoot it down. I honestly believe that Tomlin laid the foundation and the groundwork to stick with Fields once Wilson is healthy. I don't think Russell Wilson will start. Will, uh, I don't think he'll be the third quarterback against Dallas, Richie. I think he will be the backup in that game. And then I think by the time we get to the Raiders game, he will be good to go, fully good to go, and I, at that point, expect Justin Fields to remain the Steelers' starting quarterback. Do you expect that to happen uh, if Russell Wilson, I mean, excuse me, if Justin Fields loses to the Dallas Cowboys this Sunday night? Uh, yes, I do. I think that Tomlin is going to give Justin Fields a little grace. I think he'll give him the benefit of the doubt because he's been so good over the last two games. Like, I thought today Tomlin had opportunities to maybe ding Fields for the botch snap to get on him for the turnovers, and he really didn't. With the botch snap thing, he talked about how uh, there were so many different factors involved. The young center, Frazier, uh, the guard tap, playing in a road stadium. So... Really, I thought gave Justin Fields almost an excuse for why that happened. He was so praiseworthy today of the way Fields responded once they got in a big hole. I think he found his quarterback. He, for so long, Richie has stressed the mobile factor with quarterbacks, the ability to make moves with your legs. And Fields is doing that. He had 300 passing yards and 50 rushing yards in that game Sunday. He's the only quarterback in the entire NFL to do that this season. Yeah, also accounted for uh, three touchdowns, one passing, two running. Uh, we'll get to much more on the Steelers and their game plan for this weekend against, Sun, uh, against the Dallas Cowboys on Sunday night. But right now we're going to take a break. 412-575-2600 is the number. Back in a couple minutes. All right, welcome back to the Ireland Contracting Nightly Sports Call. This is our GMC tweet of the night. Cordero Patterson tweeted this. Sounds like he want to be a Steeler. And he was talking about Devontae Adams. That's kind of the big news here today. Devontae Adams once out, requested a trade. Looks like things aren't working out for him and the Las Vegas Raiders right now. He would be a top-tier wide receiver. Uh, top five, I think, maybe in the NFL. Definitely top ten receiver in the NFL. I know he's 31 years old, but... Uh, Pony, you know, I guess my, my big question to you is, would you entertain this? Uh, I, I would try to do whatever I could to try to swing a deal here uh, for Devontae Adams. They need someone else. Uh, if they don't get another receiver, I feel like George Pickens is going to blow up here anytime. Well, I agree with that last point, and I was complimenting you. I told Bob uh, the other night on this show that your savant-like skill of being able <laughs> to tell based on how George Pickens looked in the huddle and then when he got to the uh, got set before the snap, if it was going to be a run play or, or passing play, you called out like 10 in a row. It was remarkable how just from looking at George Pickens, you knew if the Steelers were going to have a run or a pass. It was incredible 
uh, your predictive powers by just watching him. But to your point about Adams, Richie, I like the guy a lot and have for a long time. I think most NFL fans would say the same thing. The issue here is the cap hit is ridiculous. It is $44 million next year and then $44 million in 2026. The amount of money he's actually going to make in season is $35 million a year. That's way more than what T.J. Watt makes. He'd be far and away the Steelers' highest paid player. And we don't know what they're going to give Justin Fields in free agency at the end of the year or what they're going to do at quarterback. I want another wide receiver. But, Richie, unless the Raiders eat a considerable amount of that money, I don't want to pay a guy that's going to be 32 years old next year and 33 years old that kind of dough. I just don't. And then give up a draft pick on top of that? I can't unless the Raiders can find a way to make the money work better for the Steelers. I wouldn't want to give up a high pick for him. Uh, what kind of money are you talking about? What would the Raiders have to eat uh, for this deal to work out for the Steelers? Uh, I think they'd have to get the cap hit down to like $30 million a year, close to what the IU cap hit would be. Because we knew that they felt comfortable adding that amount of money to their team. We know that Khan was fine with that. So add another $14 million on top of that. Richie, how many Steelers have a cap hit of over $14 million? Maybe five? That's a really good player that you cost yourself in addition to taking on Devontae Adams because it's just an out-of-control cap number. I believe there are going to be wide receivers who are going to be available at the deadline who are not going to be as good as Adams but aren't going to cost as much against your cap and probably won't cost as much as the draft pick. So... Unless the Raiders are willing to just cut their losses, uh, I'm not a huge fan of this move. If, if he was making $25 million a year, I'd drive to Vegas, pick him up, and drive him <laughs> back to Pittsburgh. But the, 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 the money is just insane, Richie. It is insane. Yeah, I was looking at that. I, I totally 100% agree with you, the money being insane. And what they would have to give up to get him would be insane, too. And you look at what... They'd have to get up at least a second-round draft pick, it sounds like. That's what some of those insiders are saying. And a second-round draft pick, you can get a pretty good receiver. They got a George Pickens, uh, but they need help right now. Uh, and they're going to need help at the deadline. Uh, like you said, there could be a couple other receivers that could make an impact because right now Van Jefferson isn't doing it for me, isn't doing it for Steelers fans, and I'm sure isn't doing it for you. No, their wide receiver depth is absolutely unacceptable. And there's got to be a middle ground. There's got to be somebody in between Van Jefferson, who had two catches on Sunday, and a guy that's got a $44 million cap hit. Someone not that bad, someone not that expensive, someone in between. And I think those types of players will be available in early November. Maybe De DeAndre Hopkins is one of them in Tennessee. He's going to cost way less, and you're going to give up probably a day three pick for him. The production won't be as good, but I can guarantee you it'll be better than what they're getting from Van Jefferson. And then you're not locked in beyond this season. So I'd be more interested in doing a move like that. Hey, I mean, even the Browns with Amari Cooper, they probably don't want to trade him to the Steelers, but if the Steelers made the best offer, I'd rent him for the last two months of the season if I could. Uh, I don't think it's, De I, my point is, I don't think it's Deont Devontae Adams or bust for the Steelers when it comes to finding a wide receiver, Richie. Yeah, I think Hopkins would be a good addition, but from what I'm told, that they're not interested in him. So uh, that's what I just heard recently. So let's go out to Twin out in Hill District. What? How you doing? Yeah, let's go out to Twin wow. in the Hill District. How you doing, Twin? I'm good, Richie and uh, John, uh, Pauly. I got three questions. Three plays that killed us Sunday. Pick his drop of the more well, fumbling. And then Cam Hayward missing the uh, sack. Well, this should have been about third or 16. They might have get the first down. And then the half snap. Uh, a twin, I can think of more plays than that. I don't know about you, Pony. I mean, uh, it, they, it just to me, this game was lost in the, first, in the first quarter, right? I felt like the defense came out flat, gave up 14 quick points, and we're down 17 nothing. And it's a different ball game at that point. Richie, how dejected was I in that press box? Oh, I mean, you were I was really yourself. having a hard time with that start to the game. I was, and I do blame myself for being there. My record uh, at Steelers Road Games not great. Uh, you were just, you know, you were happy they had an endless supply of orange pop up there. 
They made you happy. They gave they, you Fanta, I guess, to, till the cows came <laughs> home there in Indianapolis, which you liked. But uh, my issue is not that they lost the game to the Colts, okay? Those types of games happen. Teams go on the road and lose in the NFL all the time. That's not my problem. My issue is that it looked so much like their playoff losses. This team is on a mission to end that playoff win drought. I want to see evidence that they're different from the last few years. And so when you're flat at the beginning of a game and the coach's game management is atrocious, it makes me think that you're just like the last few teams, even though I will concede I am more excited about their quarterback play right now with Justin Fields. Yeah, I'm excited about their quarterback play too, uh, but it looked like the, the guy on the other side was Patrick Mahomes basically there for a little while, because no matter who played, whether it was Anthony Richardson or Joe Richie, Flacco. how's that happen? Yeah, I mean, the, you, you saw four guys wide open in the, uh, all day long, it seemed like. We're looking down and all we saw was white jerseys open. How does that happen? I know, and that's why I thought Tomlin was wrong when he talked about, oh, we can't blitz him. Well, you blitzed him with Beanie Bishop and got a sack, so I didn't understand that argument that he made after the game. Uh, you've seen Joe Flacco a million times, Mike, so really nothing out of him should confuse you. I don't remember a ton of games where Flacco looked as comfortable as he did coming off the bench against the Steelers in that game. They've rattled him. Look at the AFC Championship game from back in the day. They've rattled Joe Flacco before. That's not an impossibility. That's not something that's outside of their DNA. This defense is supposed to be great. It's the highest paid defense in the league. You should be able to get pressure, and I get it. Watt got held, and some of those should have been called, and the Minka call was a bad one. Tomlin said the NFL even admitted that, but still, Richie, even if that Minka play doesn't get called a penalty, it's third down, and knowing what we know about the Colts in that game, they probably still find a way to convert and get the first down. Yeah, I think they finished the game 8 of 15 on third down. That's a bad conversion rate, no doubt about it. They weren't doing it the first three games in their defense. I, I, I blame this loss on their defense, uh, no question about it. Um, I felt like they were flat right from the beginning. Uh, so last week, I said this was a perfect matchup for the Steelers' pony. I feel like this week is another perfect matchup. I, I definitely think that they bounce back. Uh, after that performance we saw in Indianapolis. I feel much better about this game, too. I don't think that they'll be flat for the Cowboys. No one is. Everyone wants to beat the Cowboys. They're, quote-unquote, America's team. They're always overrated. They always have a bullseye on their back. They're going to come in here and think they're hot stuff, and I think the Steelers will ultimately put them in their place. Plus, it doesn't look like Micah Parsons is going to play in that game. So, yeah, I agree with you. I would be stunned absolutely shocked if the Steelers came out and laid another egg in this game Sunday night. Yeah, Pony, both edge rushers are out. Uh, that's a huge advantage for the Steelers. Demarcus Lawrence, yep. Yeah, I, I, I think that I, I, I don't know what kind of game this is going to be for the Steelers, uh, but I would love to see Justin Fields come out, uh, continue to do what he's doing, maybe run one in, another passing touchdown. Um, I, I, I want to see Justin Fields just come right out and win this job so we're not talking about this every week at, at the Tomlin Tuesday press conference. And you know what I want to see? If Cordero Patterson is healthy, if he gets over this ankle issue, Richie, I want to see more Cordero Patterson than Najee Harris. There, I said it. I think he's a better fit for this offense. I'd rather see the guy they brought in to return kickoffs than Najee. I think he's, we watched it with our own eyes. We were looking at each other during that game and we were like, the guy's got better vision, and he understands where to go in this offense better than Najee Harris does, period. What do you think the problem is with Najee Harris? I mean, I, I get it. Everyone talks about his 1,000-yard seasons. He has three of them. I don't even think that's a big deal in the NFL today. Um, you look at yards per rush, but it seems like every time he gets the ball, he's running into someone's uh, back, uh, can't hit the hole. He's not fast enough to get to the outside. I mean, wh what is the deal with him right now? Well, I think he is someone that's got to run between the tackles. The problem is it doesn't seem like he finds the holes between the tackles often enough. Patterson finds them. He gets them. Whether it's one cut and go or he just goes straight ahead and, and, and finds that crease and gets positive yards. Uh, if you look at what Mike Tomlin or you hear what Mike Tomlin said today, I thought he was very complimentary of his offensive lineman. I thought he gave Mason McCormick and Spencer Anderson credit for the game they played against Indy. He didn't make it sound like their running woes were because of poor blocking. And he also had high praise for Cordero Patterson. So Richie, when the when you add that up, who's the who's the fall guy in this? 
It's Najee. He does not look like a fit in this offense. I don't know what offense he'd be a fit in, to be honest with you, Richie. I'm not sure. Well, they didn't pick up a $6 million option. I think that says a lot. Uh, and I think if Cordero Patterson was healthy in this game, maybe the Steelers come back and win it. Um, you know, I know we can talk about this botch snap or anything, but uh, they, they had an effective run game within him, with him in there, unlike uh, Najee They Harris. put Shamkin in. Remember yeah. they had Shamkin I, in for that big two-minute drive? Yeah. I know. Right. It, it's incredible. All right, um, we got to take a break. Back with more of your phone calls coming up next. Stay right there. All right, welcome back to the Island Contracting Nightly Sports Coverage Walsh along with Andrew Filipponi. And Pony, uh, you know, even though the, the, the Steelers had another devastating injury losing James Daniels, I think the Steelers are on the right track of getting healthy. Isaac Samalo is coming back. I think that's going to be an important part to this uh, offensive line. And also Jalen Warren could potentially play uh, this week. And I think he's an important part to that backfield and getting that running game going. I agree. Uh, I think Samalo is their best offensive lineman. I think one day Zach Frazier will be, but for right now it's Sayamalu as the guy that last year was rock solid. And I think he'll be a stabilizing force. Uh, Warren, absolutely. I just don't know with Warren how much these nagging injuries are taking a toll. He has not looked the same this year. First a hamstring, now a knee. He has not looked at all like the 2023 version of Jalen Warren. If they get that guy back, then he should be the running back who gets the lion's share of the work against the Cowboys on Sunday. Yeah, I hope Cordero Patterson's back, though, and uh, he gets the lion's share of, of carries for the Steelers. All right. Um, you know, one of the things that, you know, we talk a little bit about all the time is Najee Harris and Jalen Warren and Cordero Patterson uh, and obviously the quarterback situation. Now, say Justin Fields continues to win um, and Russell Wilson is there. Is it going to be a difficult locker room, you think? I think Russell Wilson might vouch for himself and advocate for himself, but I think Justin Fields is an easy guy to follow. He's got great leadership skills. They said that about him in Chicago. And I don't think that he would, I don't think it would divide a locker room unless Fields was playing poorly and Tomlin kept playing him. And I don't see it really working out that way. Uh, I think Russell Wilson could ask for a trade. Um, so it just it's a matter Maybe. of whether or not the Steelers want to accommodate him, Richie, on that Trade one. Trade him for a receiver. Uh, you know, the one thing that I can tell is being in that locker room, you were in the locker room on Sunday, uh, these guys are behind Justin Fields. There's no, no question about that. Yep. All right, thanks a lot, Pony. I agree, Richie. I appreciate your time. See you, man. We'll see you next week, and hopefully we see you on KDK News here coming up in just a couple minutes.